children of the night What music they make They're coming to get you, Barbara. Who wants that? I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash you with it. All right. Welcome back to Final Guys, where sometimes dumb is better. <laughs> <laughs> That should be our motto. <laughs> I'm Jack, and with me are my two favorite resurrected horror fans, Hunter Shea and Jason Brandt. Hello, fellas. Hey, y'all. Hey there, Jack. <laughs> oh, that's what I was going to do, Dan. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Can you get there from here? <laughs> <laughs> I was in a bookstore in Maine once, and I'll never forget. I'm, I'm signing books, and right behind me, I hear this guy go, I'm looking for a book for my mother. It's a crime book. My mother loves crime. I'm like, going, it's just fucking Judd behind me right now. And it was a dude who looked just like him. <laughs> I was like, whoa. So he really I nailed am... that main accent, huh? He did. Oh, I've been there enough times. There are enough of those guys that come walking out of the woods. You go, yep, there he is. <sighs> well, the reason we're speaking about Maine is because tonight's main feature is the new version of Pet Cemetery, which is a the second reinterpretation of this. Um, what year was the book? 88? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I think maybe even earlier. I think it was know. earlier than that. Yeah. A long time ago. So that'll be our main feature. But first, we'll do a little bit of news. We'll go through what we watched and get you some good horror reviews and book, books and movies and things like that. So before we get started, anything you guys want to cover before I jump into the news? Yes, uh, church smells bad. <laughs> Church. Pet Cemetery was 1983. Yes. Mm. God, so I was, eh, I was old enough. I was, I was one. Wow. Oh my! <laughs> and you didn't read it when it came out? No, I was a slacker back then. No baby genius, you. You were practically Gage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they kept rolling him on that logging road, but he kept just getting back. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first Stephen King book I ever read, and I loved it. Damn, that's a pretty hardcore one to start with. Yeah, and it's actually one of the few books. If I've never really gotten scared by a book, but that that book unnerves me. Yeah, it's messed up. Fun fact: Tim Meyer, I think I saw on Facebook, said he didn't like the book. <laughs> Shocking! Oh Jesus Christ! His God. favorite book is uh, Lysy's story <laughs> <laughs> from a Buick Eight. <laughs> So let me jump into the news because I have the, the most ridiculous news of all time here. You know how everybody is pretty much jumped off the bandwagon of um, The Walking Dead? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, AMC has announced that there's going to be a third Walking Dead TV what? show. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, they, they haven't named it yet, but it's going to be uh, female-led. So it's going to be a new scripted set, series set in the world of The Walking Dead. Uh, and it's going to, let me see if I can find a, I would do like the crawling dead and be just babies. <laughs> it's, it's going to, it's going to have two female leads. So th that's like the big twist for them, which there's plenty of females in lead positions in that show anyway. So I don't know what the big deal is. We all know women couldn't survive that. That's so stupid, <laughs> <laughs> but th their ratings are down. Nobody I know watches the Fear of the Walking Dead, and they're doubling down with movies with Rick Grimes and now another TV series. Is AMC just going to become the Walking Dead channel until it too is dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're working on it. it uh, whatever. All I talk to are horror fans for the most part, and I know like three people who watch that show. It should be. Are like we're the demographic and nobody cares. Yeah, it's sad. Uh, me and a friend of mine I work with both watch the show, but we, like I, I've said before, we hate watch it. We come in every Monday morning, like, did you see that? Can you believe? I don't know why I still watch this show. So, oh. yay! Hey, I uh, don't have time for hate watching anymore. We've <laughs> that's that's like every movie I watch. Uh, we've got to do the drinking rules. You want me to throw them in there quick? Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I can't even see the chat room tonight, so. <laughs> 
Oh, that's right. All right, Jack, your words are remakes, mask, and grief. Hunter, yours are beer, death, and church. And mine are king, wendigo, and trailer. And the bonus words are Judd, Spoils, and Ellie. Wow, yeah, he got my words right. We've already spilled a few already. Mm -hmm. Beauty. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have some better zombie news. Zack Snyder has sort of a uh, sketchy resume. Some highs, some lows, some okay stuff. Generally, people seem to like his Dawn of the Dead remake. I think it's okay. Um... Mm-hmm. He, he is doing a sequel called Army of the Dead. Ooh. All it's right. going to be a big budget Netflix movie. And best of all, he has cast Dave Batista to star in it. All right. Yeah. Dr- Drax the Destroyer himself. A guy you'd look at and think, yeah, he'd probably survive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I actually really like that movie. I think it's, um, I don't think it lives up to the first one necessarily, but, uh, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. The opening scene of that for when um <laughs> the, the opening scene of that movie is worth the price of admission. I think it's a big part of why uh the zombie craze came back. That and twenty eight days later both uh, kind of dropped yeah. around the same time. Right. Now, it's amazing that people are still coming up with zombie projects. The the fast the fast zombie craze, this is where it all came from. Yeah, there you want to see Good. No, but I was just say anyone excited for the Bill Murray movie? Oh my god, it looks like the best movie ever. Yeah, I'm into that. Hell yeah. It's Bill Murray. Come on. Bill Murray and Tom freaking Waits. I'll see anything with Tom Tilda Waits. Tilda Swinton. The, 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 the cast is endless in that. Iggy Pop is in that movie. It's so, no makeup needed. Bill Murray is now in two zombie movies. <laughs> there are just zombies and everything. Pretty soon you're going to see zombie westerns and all kinds of stupid shit like that. Ooh. Jason, I think you and I should get together on that one. I've already written that. (laughs) And it was shit. (laughs) And last but not least for news, if you guys had your hopes up for a uh, sequel to Beetlejuice, in a recent interview, Tim Burton said, I don't know, I doubt it. (laughs) That's a answer. Somebody at Warner Brothers said the project isn't in active development. So there's been a lot of rumors flying around about him and Michael Keaton and everything. Don't believe him. Oh, that sucks. Well, you know what? I take it back. I I always want to see Michael Keaton again in that role, but I don't know how you recreate the magic of the weirdness that 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 movie should not work. It's so freaking weird, and I I love it. Yeah. And I can just imagine trying to take a modern stab at it. It would probably not work. Amy right. Schumer would be Beetlejuice. Oh, oh. you're <laughs> I'm triggering not even me. Kidding. I'm not even kidding. It would be something ridiculous like that. Uh, yeah. All right. So that's all the news that's fit to print. So with that, why don't we jump over to what did we watch this week? <laughs> have such sights to show you. Okie dokie. Jason, why don't you, you like to lead off. <laughs> I actually uh, don't have as much this week because I did watch other stuff, but it's not really, not really worth talking about. I don't want to trash uh, something. So I'm going to go into, I f- have finished my Jason Voorhees marathon. The only thing wow. that's left is uh, Freddy vs. Jason but I'm going to save that until I watch the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. So first up, (laughs) my Mm. doubleheader here is Jason Goes to Hell the Final Friday. What a bizarre movie. Um, That really is. I I don't hate it. I kind of hate it as a Friday the 13th movie because Jason Voorhees is in it for four and a half minutes, but it's not bad. Like It's kind of a cool story. It just doesn't fit in the universe worth a damn. I rewatched that like a year ago and found myself liking it a hell of a lot more than I remembered. Same. Well, that's the thing. It's a total outlier that works conceptually, just not, you you just have to just forget it's a Friday the 13th movie. Yeah, exactly. If, if this wasn't a Friday the 13th movie, I would have liked it significantly more. Good kills, fun story. But Jason, you just watched them back to back. So you have the freshest eyes on this. That franchise is so uneven anyway i mean is it really that i mean 
he's shape shifting or we're body jumping. But I mean, when you compare like Ghost of Manhattan to Part Four, like so yeah, that's this is part of my uh, what I wanted to get into is the series gets so goddamn weird after from Part Six on. So Part Six is my favorite, but mm. once he becomes undead zombie Jason, shit just gets crazy and just. It's so up and down and all over. He's fighting telepaths. People are eating his heart. I mean, it's just, he's in space. It's like, what? Turning back into little boys and sewers. Yeah, exactly. Sure. It's just, it's so weird. And uneven is the best word for it. And this one is, I mean, it's a giant step up from Jason goes to Manhattan or takes Manhattan or whatever the hell. <laughs> it's, With the Muppets. It, it's light years beyond that. It just is so weird as a Friday the 13th movie. Had this been something else, I think people would have liked it a lot more. It's kind of kind of suffers from what Five did, where you find oh, wait, it's not Jason. That's not Jason. Pe- right, you know, pisses everyone off. I think this it did for me when I watched it. You know, back when it came out, kind of had that feeling for me. But I enjoyed it as weird as it is. Uh, I just just don't know about it in the series, but it's it's a solid movie. It really is. It's the Halloween three of Friday the Thirteenth. That's kind of a good way of putting it, actually. Mm-hmm. Without Tom Skerritt. If it had Tom Skerritt, it'd be classic. <laughs> one Skerritt. thing that's great about that I mean, movie... Tom Atkins, Tom Skerritt, whatever. There's a Tom. Yeah. The one thing that's great about that movie is the fact that Jason Voorhees has become this legendary figure, and finally, somebody thought to trap him and surround him and just blow him away with... Yeah. It's a great idea. And then it does nothing else with that for most of it. It's I swear it feels like another script. And at the very end, they shoehorn shoehorn him back in, and his demonic puppet thing at the end crawls up a woman's vagina, and then Kane Hodder explodes out of the floor. And I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> he has the mask on and everything. Like, what in God's name? <laughs> yeah, that was. I think that's when New Line bought the the rights or something like that, and so they had all these visions of merging things and stuff like that there's supposed to be a documentary coming out about this movie though i can't wait to see well yeah that's the one with the necronomicon and the glove freddy's glove and all that so yeah. they were trying to do something i'm not entirely sure what it was but uh there's some fun stuff in there it's worth a watch mm-hmm. all right hunter what do you got uh, all right uh sunday i was lazy and i didn't really feel like doing the things i had to do so i'm flipping around and i see sci-fi is having a shark movie marathon i was yes so normally i kind of i try to avoid these movies believe it or not i'm like i just i don't have two hours to sit through commercials this trek but i got sucked in by atomic shark i couldn't even find this on amazon (laughs) it's nowhere really yeah i can't find it i can only find it on imdb if i remember correctly it was from 2016 and what captured my attention, this is going to be shocking, was the lead girl, whose name I cannot remember. Doesn't matter. Probably never see her in anything. Maybe she'll do a Pantene commercial someday. She looked like a young Yasmin Belief. I mean, she's, like, she's a lifeguard who wears a bikini. And there's a shark patrolling the waters in California that is filled with radiation. So when the dorsal fin comes up, it's smoking and it's discolored. It's like wavy colors and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't describe how stupid this is, but they knew how stupid this was because their star power was David Faustino, Bud Bundy. Nice. So he is like a peeping Tom drone pilot. There's lots of drones in this. It's unbelievably hysterical. Like this one is, this one is so bad. It's good. This is an SBIG yeah. movie. Yes. Cause there were things in here you can really have fun with. It's vicious. At one point there's a boy, he's gotta be like 11 and he's buried up to his neck in the sand. And the ghost shark just freaking hit the radiation of the ghost shark. When it jumps up on land, the kid's head explodes. <laughs> like <laughs> I looked at my daughter. I'm like, did, did they just kill that kid? They will go anywhere and do anything in this movie. Sci-fi uh, went on a run there where everything was sharks and spiders because they could do good CG with them. And Oh, well, there is no good CG. Well, yeah, well, good, good CG is not the right way. <laughs> the, Cheap, affordable CG. 
Yeah, this is bad Ben CG territory. <laughs> was this Atomic Shark or Saltwater Atomic Shark? This was straight up Atomic Shark. Maybe it, it also was known as Saltwater Atomic Shark. Okay, because I'm, I'm seeing it. It looks like it kind of has the same cover, so I might be able to get a copy of this because now I'm interested. This is Here's a cool drinking game. The, the main girl gets fired from her job as a lifeguard early in this movie, but yet never takes off her lifeguard bikini. So she wears this to the very end. Oh, and her father is, is Jeff Fahey, by the nice. way. Nice. Very nice. Who you just sit and go, oh, you poor bastard. But here's the drinking game to do with her. Every now and then she puts on these little tiny short shorts that barely cover her cervix. They're so tiny. But there's no continuity. So we kept going, shorts on, shorts off, shorts on. So every time there's a change, take a shot whatever your favorite drink is you will be blotted by the end of this movie <laughs> all right I, I think i'm gonna buy a copy of this i i want to watch this i'm telling you it's very self-aware but it's <laughs> it's it's funny i actually dug it oh self-aware hurts a little bit well nice did i freeze I uh, your, your, your picture went out for a second yeah there. all right i'm back all right. Well, I have a so bad it's good kind of movie as well. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, there was a movie that I heard about that was supposed to be so scary. And it was one of those ones that I never actually got to see, but heard about a lot. And then I encountered it in my surfing uh, recently, and I finally watched it. It's called Beyond the Door. Have you seen this, Hunter? Oh, yes. Is that with the dead kid and... No. No? So this is a 19... I think it's 1974. It's the year after The Exorcist. Oh. And this is a blatant ripoff of The Exorcist. It's, it is the, the weirdest movie. It's over the top, low budget, poorly acted, and there are stuff... That, so the, there's a family, mother, husband, two boy and girl, young. The little boy drinks pea soup out of a can like it's a juice box what? <laughs> that's a, that's a future school shooter that's disgusting uh and the, the husband is like a douche to the wife the whole time anyway she gets pregnant and it's like the devil's baby but she's like possessed and this all takes place in san francisco uh it, it is, it's hard to describe. They actually got sued by The Exorcist um, and, and lost. So, the, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, really, I mean, there are, and there's like stop motion stuff. There's dolls coming to life and their eyes blinking. And like, uh, there's a lot of stop motion stuff going on in this movie. And uh, mm, Harry Housen esque. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like, it's almost like a, a bunch of high school kids <laughs> budget kind of oh, stuff. Boy. But, um, it, it, and Hunter, you and I were just recently talking about possession movies and I totally forgot to mention this one. Um, this is Jason, you should watch this cause it could be a so bad. It's good kind of thing. Uh, right. It, it throws every possession thing into the sink and turns on the garbage disposal. And, <laughs> Uh, uh, and this is from the 70s? This is like 1974, I think. Wow. Uh, yeah. Free on Prime. All right, I'll watch it. Free, d check it out, and uh, y y if nothing else, you're going to get a kick out of it. Sometimes free ain't better. <laughs> All right. Uh, so obviously next up, I watched Jason X. Uh, I saw this in the theater when it came out. Haven't seen it since. I, I don't know where everybody stands on this, but I got to tell you, I thought this was a lot of fun. I, I think Jason X is a blast. It's oh, so fun. sorry. It's, it's fun. totally fun. Yeah, it's so tongue in cheek and self aware, and it's just they added everything that you liked from the old movies back in. The nudity's back because they were starting to not do that in some movies. Great kills, ridiculous, over the top stuff. Kane Hodder somehow is bigger in this. I don't know <laughs> if they padded him up, but he can barely fit down hallways now. Yeah, it's just a fun movie. I. I thoroughly enjoyed watching this, and uh, I'm a little surprised. 
I hadn't gone back to it again since I watched it, you know, when did it come out? 2001 or something like that. Who do you think would win? Uh, Space Enhanced Jason or The Terminator? Oh, I don't know. That's a pretty good question. That would be know. an awesome battle. Space Enhanced Jason just keeps coming. So I don't know. So it's The Terminator. That's a good one. There's a lot of not ugly women in this movie, too. And probably the best looking robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, they take the the classic sleeping bag kill everyone loves from seven and they, uh, you know, pump it up to 10 pun intended. And, uh, it's just, it's so much fun. I was really blown away. My wife didn't seem to like it so much. Uh, she liked it, but she also kind of fell asleep in the middle and I was just, I was just loving it. And to be honest, this is up there as one of my favorites. Um, just wow. going back through the whole thing. It's only, only because I had so much fun watching it. I don't know if I'd say it's one of the best, made ones necessarily although it's not like you know you're watching a stupid movie but you're enjoying it it's... yes it was it was very enjoyable and uh i don't know i dug it i wish they had done more after that um but see this is one of those ones that i every so often i encounter surfing around and i can't turn it off i'm like oh so i've probably seen this one maybe the most out of all the friday the 13th because there was a while there where they were showing it pretty regularly so i've probably seen this movie like six or seven times <laughs> wow it, it's enjoyable i'm i'm gonna go back to it again before too long it um it really surprised me it, it's yeah. it's fun so it made no money i mean that's what really killed that movie yeah i think everyone thought the going to space thing was going to be stupid but i don't know if everybody expected it to be intentionally kind of stupid the way it was so i i don't know but I like will you it. take will you take Jason goes to hell and Jason goes to space? I mean, right there you have the two biggest outliers of the, the yeah. franchise. Yep. And yeah, it is really the do. best horror icon going into space movie. Oh, it's not even close. Yeah. It's it's, right. it's fun. It, I saw it has a terrible rating on IMDb. Apparently people hate this, but I dig it. So there yeah. you go. All done like with Friday the 13th. Awesome. That was nice. Oh, me, right? It's me. Yep. It's me. All right. This is a movie my wife suggested. It was on some cable channel called Our House. With uh, it's about it's about a kid. He's kind of like some genius inventor in college, and he's trying to create some device. He's basically trying to Tesla the world where he wants to make a device that provides electricity, free electricity that's in the air that can charge everything. Oh, does it look like a, a pyramid kind of a small yes, pyramid and spins around? I did see this movie. I couldn't remember if I had or not. Yes. So it's but instead what it does what happens is in the very beginning the kids in college and he's he, he never really comes home and he's home with his family and they're kind of cool and he he leaves this, you know, family event when they want him to stay and then the next day his parents die in a car accident. So he's going to kind of put his life on hold to come back and raise his young brother and young sister. Right, right. Little does he know this device that he has is creating some weird amplification where the dead can interact with them in the house. I got to tell you the restraint that they use in this movie, it had, it had the vibe of super dark times to me. Okay. Like it could have gone like full on reanimator. It could have gone bat crap crazy. It's really subdued performances. It's it's got a really it's got a heavy atmosphere. It's very heavy. It's a heavy movie. Um, so it doesn't get ridiculous. There were some beats in the end. I was like, oh yeah, I kind of saw that coming. And it it's not exploitive in any way. It's just it gives a cool idea of what if. And if you could do it, is that really the thing you should do? You know, kind of like from beyond. It's like a combo of reanimator and from beyond, um, but done in a more intelligent way. And I can see why if you're looking for gore and jump scares and shit, you're not going to dig this movie at all. Um, I kind of compare it to, I don't know, Jason, you saw the movie UFO with Gillian Anderson. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you're a UFO nut who just wants UFOs and aliens invading, you're going to hate that movie. Right. But I thought that was an excellent movie. A lot of math. And I wasn't good at math, but it was uh, a lot of math. <laughs> a whole lot of math. It was basically okay. that's Jillian the... Anderson. Yeah, I want to see that. A lot of math. I don't know if I want to see that. Jillian Anderson wearing the worst wig ever invented. 
Um, <laughs> but if you want to watch like a dude with Asperger's try to figure out the math of a UFO, that's definitely the movie for you. <laughs> oh. So, but yeah, definitely check out our house. Uh, you can get it. It's, it's on some cable channel. It's definitely worth it. It's based on the picture Ghost from the Machine, which I've never seen. So and now I'm curious to see that. Hmm. No, I I, re- I saw the poster when I looked this movie up, and I just couldn't remember if I'd seen it. Now you're describing it, I remember it. But I feel like maybe I talked about it on here last year, but I just, I'm having trouble remembering most of it. So... Uh, it's, that's sure, the thing. It's, it's a it's a f- nice experience while you're watching it. I don't know if it's going to stick with you. Jack, it might because it has a blonde girl in it who is absolutely stunning. I'm in. So there you go. <laughs> These are my tips. I'm always looking out for you. <laughs> All right, let me go because we get, we got a lot to cover. Uh, so I uh, picked up on DVD, not Blu-ray because I don't have it on Blu-ray. The 1977 BBC Count Dracula, which Hunter knows is uh, one of the movies that when I was like 10 years old, I saw this on public television at like midnight and changed my life. I was I loved it. I thought it was amazing. It was creepy as hell. And as a kid who loved vampires, like this was just like a, a monumental thing for me. Saw it once. Then. Many, many, many years later, there's no cable. There's no nothing. You know, cable comes, but you can't. And I, I was assumed I was never going to see it again. And I ran into somebody um, through work who happened to. We started talking about vampires, and I mentioned that, and they ended up sending me a videotape of it. And oh, this is nice. probably 1990. One nineteen ninety sixty three mid nineties somewhere like we're talking a long long time ago. Uh, saw it and when I was a kid, I missed the beginning because my father saw like the first part and he was like, "You got to stay up and watch." I think they showed it in three parts when I saw it. I missed the first part and saw the second too. The DVD it's broken into two parts, so that back then was when I finally saw the whole thing. Again, I always talk about how much I loved it. It's very dated. Uh, it's you know and, and and all that but been thinking about it with my 70s vampire kick i was like you know what screw it this i should have this on my shelf so i bought it so this is really the third time i've ever really watched it watched it over two nights and while it's very funny because the filming of it is sometimes it's like video and other times it's film depending on where they are hmm. and, and and they use that early 70s special effects sometimes where they do like a the negative photo kind of thing oh, uh, some, some moments like that and it's bbc so it, it's not the highest budget thing however it's just a really solid interpretation of the dracula book louis jordan is a much more suave and kind of cocky dracula i think it's the best van helsing i've ever seen i've, I've always loved this guy as van helsing he's my favorite van helsing wow. so ironically better than hugh jackman huh yeah, just until Hugh Jackman. Um, <laughs> ironically, after that, I saw this video on YouTube that was comparing like all the Dracula uh, movies and, and, and doing a contest is which one is the most accurate. And I watched it. Then, like out of the blue, Pam Morris, our, our cult leader, uh, Fitch. Tweet, uh, t- tweets <laughs> out this a link to the same video. And I'm like, oh, my God, I just watched this. And sure enough, the BBC Dracula is the one that won the most uh, uh, loyal to the book. This and Bram Stoker's Dracula, with the Coppola one, were neck and neck for a while. And if you watch this movie, and this is one of the reasons to watch this movie, you will see the blueprint for the Coppola movie. It basically takes oh. this movie as this and makes it the skeleton and then puts all this banana stuff on top of it that it took from all the other things. But basically you can see like directly parts of it. They're like, Oh, that's almost like exactly what he did except more over the top and with better special effects. So I had a blast. And so I know Pam's uh, watching it now. Like I said, yeah, just have to put on your goggles and say, okay, this was 1977 BBC. I'm I'm in, you know, a different um, atmosphere than, you know, modern movies. 
Huh. Yeah, I've never even heard of it. I might have to check it out. Louis, Louis Jordan is the uh, it plays Jordan. Dracula. All right, I got one more thing here I want to mention quick, and that is the Joe Bob Briggs show continues. And Friday they did Cue the Winged Serpent. Oh, nice. Larry Cohen. Yeah, they had a they had a lot of nice things to say about Larry Cohen. And I guess they'd recorded it before he died, but uh, they didn't go in and talk about that. So it was just kind of a nice thing with them just praising him without even knowing, you know, what was coming. Right. Oh, that's uh, cool. And then, by the way, I hadn't seen that movie in forever. I forgot the cast in that movie. It's, ri- it's ridiculous, right? It's so crazy that he got them to do that movie. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's solid. And then I didn't get to finish the second one yet, but they did, um, society, which is, uh, you know, a suitably insane movie. So yes, if you're not watching it, go watch the last drive in somebody take over for me. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I'll go. I got a quick little book. Uh, I got to look it up because it's a long title. It's the in search of the nobility, Texas wild man by Alfred alley. Now just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, I bought this book because the the book cover is my plastic Bigfoot that I have. <laughs> I saw the cover and I was like, what the hell is he reading? It's just like a toy. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to buy this book. Uh, dude, this sh- shocked the shit out of me. I'm expecting like some, you know, Swamp Monster Massacre kind of romp or whatever. This is totally, this is like. It's a, about a guy who has a show like Robert Stack. What was the Robert Stack? Unsolved Mysteries. Yeah. But with monsters and stuff. He's kind of a scumbag. And he knows he's on the outs. And he discovers this dude who's been trying to find Bigfoot for like 30, 40 years. And he travels out to Texas to kind of film this guy and kind of poke fun at what a schmuck he is for wasting his life there. But this guy has a really kind of complex story and he's dying and stuff. And it's nothing like you think it's going to be <laughs> like it, it starts out one way and then it goes, a com- it takes a complete right turn in the middle of the book. And I was like, what the hell? I'm telling you again, I, I will compare this to UFO. If you think you're going to get like, you it's like that kind of thing where, Oh, I'm going to get this. You're not going to get that, but you're going to get something better than what you thought you're going to get. So you really liked it. I do uh, of all the crappy Bigfoot books I've read, <laughs> encrypted books. This one's this one really stands out. It actually it's it's stuck with me. I've been thinking about it every day since I finished it. See, with that cover, I would never have given it a second look. Oh, I know it's the worst cover ever. It's like it's like he's intentionally saying, "Don't read my book." Like authors, please, please pay someone to do your covers if you can. Like it makes a big difference. Don't just Ooh. take a picture of a toy. <laughs> I know. So I guess this is the one time you can say you, you can't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, I guess uh, the old adage stands true. I also expected 4,000 typos, and I saw I found two. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you. You're really surprising me. <laughs> it was weird. It was Good. such a weird experience. Who is the author? Uh, let me look it up again. It is... Uh, blah, I've blah, got blah, Alfred Alley. Alfred Alley. Alley who I think he had a blurb from like Jeff Strand in there. Wow. Well, nice going, yeah. Alfred. Sounds yeah. nice. All right. I'm done over here. So, okay. I'll just quickly say I watched season three of uh, Santa Clarita diet. You finished. It, yeah. It's great. It's just great. And Timothy Oliphant is a national treasure. So, He's a, he is. A, we watched the first episode. I'm like, he is out of, out of his mind. This season's great. It, this season is great. So if you're into this show, You'll, you'll enjoy the season. If you haven't watched this yet and you're looking for something on Netflix, give this a try and don't give up after the first episode. Watch like two or three or four before you give up on it because it's a great show. And check out the Monster Men archives when we reviewed the first season? I think oh, it was the first good. season. Yeah. I got to convince my wife to, to jump back into this. You guys have convinced me. Awesome. It's really good. You got anything else, Hunty? No. Excellent. All right, let's get to let's uh, take a visit to the pet cemetery. Your favorite scary movie? Uh, I don't know. You have to have a favorite. What comes to mind? All right. I don't want to be buried in a pet cemetery. I don't want to live my life again. I don't want to be buried. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I have said in the past that I thought the original pet cemetery was just okay. Agreed. Uh, 
Yeah. Uh, uh, it wasn't no. sacred ground. It was spoiled. <laughs> sour. <laughs> now, sour. Sour. Do you think it would be ironic if they buried Joey Ramone in a pet cemetery? Oh, that'd be awesome. <laughs> it's so messed up. So, I mean, to recap, family moves to Maine. They meet a kindly old neighbor, Judd. They make friends. They become close. The family's cat dies in order to save the uh, kids from grief. The old man shows the father an uh, Indian burial ground that's behind a pet cemetery that brings the cat back to life. And sure enough, after that, somebody dies and everybody knows what happens with the pet cemetery. So we can go from there. Yeah. Um, I have some pretty, I, I can't wait to talk about this movie. So uh, who wants to go first? What, what's your initial thoughts? Go ahead, Jason. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I can. I'm trying to decide where to insert my rant here. Um, oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, it's going to be a doozy. It's earmuffs, kids. It's going to change. It's changing the way I watch movies from now on. So it's going to be it's going to be a rant. But wow, I'm trying to separate that from this movie. I liked it. Uh, I didn't love it, um, but I did. I did enjoy it. I thought it was pretty well made. I thought maybe the pacing was off from the first act to the second act. Uh, the the first half to the second half. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot happens at the beginning, and then a billion things happen at once at the very end of the movie. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they made some changes. I dug it. Uh, I thought the acting in this one was better than the first one. Um, Jason Clark is actually in two movies now that I consider pretty good. <laughs> He's this great actor who keeps making movies that uh, suck. I don't know how Winchester. that happens. But... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, I, I liked it. I liked it. A couple issues with it, but uh, I actually liked what they did with it. It surprised me. Okay. Can you hang up now? Because clearly you know nothing about horror. Go ahead, Hunter. <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. So I watched this. I made it a point not to get too drunk watching it, so I waited till later. <laughs> I was good. I said I want to be clear-headed and stay awake for the whole thing, so that would be cool. I. It's It's definitely different. It's got a different feel to it it's darker. There's yep. no, there's no releasing the pressure valve here. Um, I do agree that the acting is better overall than the first, except for, I mean, John Lithgow is great, but you know, Herman Munster made this iconic. Yeah. But so, if he would have tried to do that voice, that's all everybody would have thought of. I think he did. I think not doing the voice was probably a smarter play. Exactly. It was, but I don't know. There was some sort of charm missing from his character. There, there was there was no investment in him compared to like. Yes, they didn't give him now. anything to do. That no, was, that was the problem. Um, I thought the movie was meh. Like I kept just saying to him as I'm watching, I said, "Just don't compare it. Just don't compare it." And then when we left, because I watched, there were three generations that watched this movie, and I asked the older generation than me, "What'd you think?" And she was like, Ugh, "That's kind of boring." I asked my kids, I'm like, well, that wasn't scary at all. So I was like, hmm. But it is a well-made movie. Mm -hmm. There just seems to be, there's just certain things, like, I, I never got the Zelda, like, Zelda really kind of freaked me out in the first. I didn't get it here. Pascal, I didn't, he was kind of just... There was no reason for him to be in the movie. Yeah, it was they, just a fart in the wind They should have cut thing. that out. Yeah, there were, like, some very heavy beats that they just kind of just went, eh, whatever. But I will give it credit because I thought the ending was amazing. Oh I agree. God. I loved it. Wow. Here comes Jack. I was so disappointed by the ending of this movie. I thought it was okay. And then in the third act, there were things happening that I was going, nope. Eh, that's kind of cool. That's really stupid. And then the ending happened. And I sat there and was like, dumbfounded at how terrible that ending was you are no nihilist my friend <laughs> oh my god it, now i it, talking to people the next day i said i think if you have no attachment to the source material the book or the original movie and you just go into this movie you might have a fine time with it because you'll be like it is what it is and that's great if you have any attachment to the source material that movie just betrays everything about the original book the 
father's motivation is descent into madness is totally gone. It just turns into a conjuring kind of ending. Uh, it's almost like the pet cemetery is an addiction in this movie. Yeah, and but it I wasn't actually, explained well. And I actually disagree about the acting. I thought the mother was good, and I thought that Jason Clark was pretty. I never really saw his descent into madness. He didn't emote very well. I thought he was kind of cardboard. Uh, I thought John Lithgow was just okay, but I never really felt that any real affection for the family or vice versa. And no, we didn't get enough of any of them where you were. I don't know. No, I agree. That's my problem with the pacing issues. Um, the pacing was terrible because it like a long time goes and you're like, what's going on? Then all of a sudden it was like, well, we have to hit this. We have to hit this. And they started and the whole, they just, the stuff that they took out from the original versus this was sorely missed. And then that stupid showdown at the end was just, oh my God. I just, now the little girl, there were moments of brilliance with her. And then I thought they overdid it with her. Uh, as well, we can get into that in spoilers. But so for me, like I said, if uh, a general audience person wants to just go see a scary movie, yeah, go see Pet Cemetery. It's okay. But I think this misfired on a lot of cylinders. If you're looking at it with a more critical eye, hard pass. Yeah, see, yeah, I, I like the ending, so I left pretty happy with how it went. I get, yeah, we'll have to save that for spoilers. But the reason I said up front, and I'll do a mini mini rant here, and then I'll mm-hmm. go into the reasons for it in spoilers. Uh, I couldn't tell what how good the tension was uh, in the last half of this movie because I knew almost every freaking thing that was going to happen because I watched the three trailers, not by choice, but because I go to the movies and they play them before the movies I see. So I knew which characters were going to do what. I knew who was going to die. I knew uh, there, there's this big misdirection at one point about two thirds of the way through. I already knew what was going to happen. It, this yeah. pissed me off so much. This robbed so much of what could have been tension. So again, I don't know how tense the end of this movie is. I have no idea because I knew everything that was going to happen from the trailers. So this was the straw that broke the camel's back for me. Um, we, what we are talk- you going to do now to, f- to fight this? Well, we, we talked a couple weeks ago about uh, 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 shockwaves. Uh, the producer for Halloween, Ryan Turek, saying they have to do this because they know us horror fans are going to go to the movies, so they have to make better trailers to get the normies in. Yeah, bring the rubes in. Well, um, um, they can no longer count on my money to go see these movies where they spoil them. Uh, so uh, any movie that has spoilers like this, again, I'm not going to see it. And the but first- here, how will you know it's a spoiler until you see it? <laughs> well, I, I can tell you right now. There's one coming out that... Uh, it looked like it could have been cool till the second half of the trailer showed everyone who's killed and has horrible things happen to them. I think it's called Ma or Ma's house or something oh, like Ma. that. Oh, yeah. geez. Yeah, that movie looks like... Are you freaking kidding me? They show who she kills. They show who goes missing. They show everything in the trailer. So I'm done. If, I, if, if there's a trailer I watch and it looks like they're spoiling which characters die and what's going to happen in the third act, I just don't want to give them my money anymore because I feel like I'm being robbed of something. Like, I, I don't know what I would have thought of this had I not seen the trailers. I really don't. See, this is where your, your relative youth goes against you. Because when you hit me and Jack's age, you can see a spoiler trailer and it's gone in five minutes. <laughs> She's like, oh, I, I don't remember. The dementia doing. hasn't kicked in for I me actually, yet. I agree with him on, the, on this particular trailer. <laughs> I saw the first trailer and I was like, wow, they just gave away so much. And there's particularly some stuff. Yeah, we can get on in spoilers. I I I agree. There was no surprises until there was one or two, and I thought that the surprises that they didn't give away were dumb. So, yeah, uh, I, I I think I saw two or three trails. I think I saw three, and each one spoiled something else. So it was just like I'm watching a movie, and I, I know everything's going to happen. I saw one trailer for it, so that's I barely paid attention to it. So that's why. I, I was like, well, yeah, whatever. I think I saw the third one in front of us. So it's like, come on. Like, Jesus, the movie comes out in two weeks, and now I know the freaking ending. Like, come on. Drives me crazy. So I'm done. <laughs> Putting so my I, foot down. Jason, Hunter, out. Hunter, I know you don't like the It remake. No. I think this is, I think the It remake is way better than this. I agree. Uh, sure. Yeah. I liked it. I like this. I, I just didn't love this. Didn't love it either. <laughs> this movie has made, I think, almost forty million dollars worldwide right now. 
What was the budget? Well, 21 mil. So it's making us money back. All right. Look, this is, I don't care. At this point, I don't care if the movies suck. I want horror movies to make money, like good, like eye opening money at the box office. So this will finish probably around, I don't know, probably 70 million. That's phenomenal. Yeah. And this didn't feel like a cash grab to me. This was made by the guys who did um, Starry Eyes. Starry Eyes. Yeah. yeah. So these guys know how to make good stuff. Um, yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah. I didn't feel like this was poorly directed. I just, I really felt like, I don't know if it was the screenplay or whatever, but yeah, the pacing was my biggest issue. I felt I like actually, I had to read the book again. I actually felt like if this had been a sequel to Pat Cemetery, and they the changes where it was a different family, and they did what they did with the ending, I would have been more okay with it than making it the actual story. Because of yeah. your love of the, the book? I just thought that the ending of this movie was, it missed the point of the whole book and, and, and True. other movie. Well, that's where it kind of, they made, they put their stamp on it and made it their own. So if it was a I sequel like and not the original story, Okay the sequel goes in a different direction but this i was like oh wow like you you, you that field gold was why right you missed it hmm. i thought uh, that was the best thing they did she did too some, yeah let's get into the spoilers, spoilers. So we can talk about this. all right so we're all giving this kind of like i'm giving this like a c uh, a bouncy c a bouncy c i'll give it a b minus yeah i was gonna give it a b b b minus yeah worth the watch i probably wouldn't see it in the theaters yeah, and like I said, if if you're if if you have no attachment to the source material, or you're just looking for you know a fun time with the movies of a scary movie, it's well, it, fine. It's funny you say that because my wife has not seen the original and has not read the book, and we walked out, and she kept saying, "I don't know what it is. I just can't put my finger on it. Something just didn't sit well with me." And the more we talked about it, she thought there's the ending just came way too fast. Like everything was just crammed in right at the end. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And she felt like she didn't have attachment to the characters who were getting killed. And I completely agree with that. So, yep. All right. So spoiler alert. If you don't want to hear spoilers, you're, you've been warmed. Let's go. Uh, so let me just talk about the ending real quick here. <laughs> mm. This man in the book and original, I can't believe I am now looking at the original Pet Cemetery as a head and shoulders above this movie. It is Citizen Kane compared to this. Wow. Yeah. In my opinion, <laughs> like it's so much better than this movie. I think you need to rewatch the original. I have watched the original. It is way better than this movie. <laughs> I actually put these on par, to be honest, because <laughs> uh, it because it it hits. It has things like uh, the the wife's parents uh, clashing with the husband, and then number one thing, this man buries his son. Things go wrong. And he is just losing it. And at the end of the book and the movie, he kills Gage, he kills Church, and then he looks at his wife's dead body and goes, she hasn't been dead as, as long as he... It'll work better because she hasn't been dead as long. And right. he's clearly gone mad and picks her up and takes her to the pet cemetery. And the the you know, he has just lost it. This movie... The, the miss the whole point of it that well that's like you know the shining kind of thing you know is the house haunted is the guy haunted it's kind of you have to you have to play with it i didn't want a beat for beat remake of the original so but instead I didn't mind you this. had like a, a fight in this in the pet cemetery they have the big showdown that was such a stupid like oh that was a commercial movie thing and then how long there was no sense of okay it, for him to take the cat there, it was like a, you know, hours to get there, or whatever. Through and then the, the little girl just, whoop, and and does it in no time. And people, how long does it take to come back? Like none of that made sense. I get it. We're talking about zombies anyway, so whatever. But no, so I, what I, you, I completely agree. It, and that was part of my pacing thing. It's just like they just kept cramming more and more shit in faster and faster and faster. And it's like they're kind of started. The rules stopped kind of making sense a little bit. Right. What but, What did you think about switching which child died, and how they handled that? Uh, I thought that, actually I kind of liked it, and I think I'd have liked it more had I not known from the goddamn trailers that it was her the whole freaking time. <laughs> so, 
So oh. I I th I thought um again it was it was rushed, but I like the idea of somebody a little taller being the killer because that's one of my big gripes with the first movie is it's like seeing this kid who's killing people is it's disturbing, but it's completely not believable at all. Yeah, there's a few shots you can tell it's a doll. And yeah, things like that. much kind of like it's kind of like Chucky on a rampage. Yes, but not done as well. <laughs> uh, I think that works in the book having a, a toddler do it, but in the first movie it didn't really work. So I liked switching it to the girl. But again, I didn't have the punch from it, and I don't know if it's because it wasn't done all that great or because I knew it was coming. I don't know. I I really liked when she first came back, but then I thought she talked too much and it became, I don't know, pedestrian. Well, that's, that's kind of the idea is, is somebody who's more articulate and talk as much as you want, but say something that is going to be iconic or scare you or something. It was no, just blather. I thought, no, it looked, it sounded like somebody, you know, acting like Chucky or something like, like it, it didn't feel like I was watching a real movie. It felt like, Somebody trying to act like you, you in your living room with your wife and you're trying to just scare her. She's like, cut it out. Stop it. Stop like, looking through my blinds. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it, I was just like, oh, th this is not well written. Um, and they're overdoing it. And they're, uh, it, it just became like she went from creepy to just like. You could have made her far more sinister. Yeah. Than like, a little kid because just uh, just being older and having better chops to do it. But they didn't. So I, I was disappointed with how they handled her. Because one thing is in the book, when he digs up Gage, Gage is like moldy and stuff like that. And he's, he's, he's really effed up from getting hit by the truck. Not so much in the movie, but still, they had the scene in the, in the, at the funeral where the casket gets knocked over. There's a lot of disturbing stuff like that. So I did like, like what she had the staples in the back of her head and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. like, all right, they're kind of going for that corpse thing. Um, but then... And I loved when she like was going after the mother, uh, and when she's like stabbing the mother, I was like, "Oh yeah!" And e brutal. Even the mother's reaction to seeing her the first time was great. Yeah. I loved that when he says, "Just hug your hug your daughter." That was like, Ugh. no, <laughs> hard pass. Give your dead daughter a kiss. So I thought the mom was great, uh, and she looked like a mom. But Hunter, you said something else. I thought Zelda was terrible in this. First, in the, the first point? movie, Zelda is like legendary. There are, are legions of kids. If you were probably Jason Yuri's or something, whoever saw we just saw this movie as a kid. Well, I was older, so it didn't get me. But there's a lot of people that have nightmares still about the Zelda from the mm -hmm. original movie. And the whole thing, it was just set up for jump scares. There were so many just jump scares in this movie versus genuine tension. What's the line or moment of this movie that people will talk about 30 years from now? I think the very end when they come, they, they come for Gage. The last shot, yeah. That's about it, right? I mean, there's so much in the original Pet Cemetery. Yeah. So when I was saying that it felt like they could have explained more, I think what they were doing with her having the Zelda flashbacks was the influence of the Pet Cemetery being close. It was like messing with them. But I thought mm -hmm. there wasn't enough explanation of that. I, and I feel like that could have been Judd, another scene with him kind of explaining that the closer you get, the more it affects you or something. They, they left out the whole thing where Judd talks about how they did bury somebody in the pet cemetery and the guy came, the guy came back from the war. Yeah. They left that whole thing out. And then when he was talking about his dog, they didn't really go into that much at all. So you met, they missed a, a lot of layers. Um, I believe in the first movie, Judd's wife is still in the movie, um, uh, and in the book, Judd's wife is in the, in the is in the book, um, mm. and it's just and in this, it's just kind of like okay, they meet him, he tells him about it, and he's like, "Oops, I shouldn't have told you about it." Like it's my favorite part in this movie when the girls having it's Halloween, and the girls are all like you know dressed up, and then. The father looks and there's Judd standing at the driveway. And he, he's like, Judd, what are you what are you trying to scare them? I'm like, he's not doing he's anything. Just he's just standing, standing there. He's <laughs> just an old dude just standing wanting to talk to you. Yeah, I, I wondered that too. I'm like, he's not holding a chainsaw. Like, we all stopped and looked at each other moving. We're like, what the fuck is that about? <laughs> yeah. So, sure. okay. Here's, here's the other part of my rant. Okay. I, I already said I knew the girl got it. To me, that should have been a big boom moment for me having read the book. 
seen the movie, it should be like, oh shit, they went with the girl instead of like, yeah, okay, yeah, duh. And then yeah. they do what I'm guessing was a great fake out with the Achilles scene where he's standing beside the bed. They're doing a, a slow dolly under the bed on his Achilles, but I already know that's not where it happens. I know it happens on the stairs because I've freaking seen it. Yep. So that I think was a great fake out by the directors. They were referencing the first movie. They completely screwed with your expectations, but I already knew what was going to happen. I'd already seen him fall down the stairs. So I know exactly where he dies there was zero tension in that scene because I knew everything that was going to happen. You're a one trick pony. <laughs> what? Uh, it's just funny, man. You just, you were this, this trailer killed you on. This. I'm so pissed off. You're this right though. You like this movie. When that scene happened, I knew she, he wasn't going to be under the bed. I knew I'm like, Oh, she's in the stairs. And when I first saw the trailer, that was the number one thing that I go, they showed Judd getting killed in the trailer. Yeah. In the freaking trailer. It's yeah. insane. Uh, I guess they're figuring out ah, people know it, whatever. Put it in there. But that movie's 30 years old. There's a lot of people who haven't seen that shit. You know? I know. That's usually the point of remaking it. God. Okay. So then the zombie family. <laughs> the people around know. me seem to like it a lot, by the way. The, I can the see zombie, that. The zombie family coming back, you know, the daughter kills the mother, then brings her back, then they kill the father. That whole thing. And with them coming to me again, I think if you just were Joe Schmo off the street and that this was just another movie, you might be like, okay, that's typical horror movie ending. Oh my God. The little kid. That's so dark, whatever. I'm so jaded. That doesn't bother me. You are jaded (laughs) as hell. Yeah, (laughs) really? Two year olds going to get murdered. It's a movie. Yawn. It's a movie. (laughs) Hey, the original one, the kid comes back with a scalpel. By the Uh, way, I'm going to give you a little bit of expertise as a person who worked on a tow truck during the graveyard shift. When that little girl got hit by that truck, what's left of her, you can put in a can of soup. Yeah, that would have, she looked like a water balloon that popped. She was a bloodless. There was nothing. There was no blood anywhere. She's just kind of like a body laying in the grass. I'm like, oh, how nice. Yeah, I thought she was remarkably well preserved. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I did I, like the droopy eye, but that seemed like a little, a little uh, light. Yeah, what she endured. I've seen people hit by trucks at night. It is not pretty. <laughs> oh. It's hideous. But when I what that whole fight in the graveyard, I'm literally <laughs> going. They were sitting in a boardroom, and somebody said, "Well, what? We, we haven't really been back to the pet cemetery. The, the movie's called Pet Cemetery. You should have the climax in the pet cemetery. That's a great idea." And it just turned into you know any other you know. It was the, the ending of uh, Aquaman. You know, they were just fighting. Do you think it would have been better if they had like the Star Trek music? Gage! Gage! No, I like the ending. I like what they did with the family. I thought it was different. It was the only thing that took me off guard in the whole freaking movie. And maybe that's why I like it. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Like I really love the ending. It saved the movie for me. Me too. I just uh, think, look, it's a fine. It's a great. If you want to go out and see a horror movie, you got you got your girl. You're trying to like, you know want to get a little something with her. Maybe go see that movie. Maybe she'll get a little scared. Take her in the car later. Have fun. Jesus Christ. Dating with Hunter Shea. Yeah, hey, that's how it works. <laughs> see what you need to do, Jason, is do what Jack and I do during the coming attractions. You're busy just trying to saw that hole in the popcorn bucket. Oh, uh, see, I I do that before I even get in there. Oh, uh, see, that's we do it there. So that's we're not an amateur move on my part. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> and bring up like a dull blade, so that way it takes a while. Uh, I'm just gonna have to start bringing freaking earbuds to put in and listen to music and just look at my lap while I'm waiting. You know, like I don't know how to get around this. You know, if you close your eyes, I mean. You might, you'll miss stuff. You'll miss enough if you close your eyes. It's gotten to the point where I have to close my eyes in the theater, put my fingers in my ears and go, la, 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 so that I want to go see the next coming attraction. Or just go out and take a, take a wee. Oh, I do that anyway. I'm I'm old, getting old. God, you're wizened before it even starts. (laughs) I got my tickets. I got my tickets for Avengers Endgame. It is a three hour movie. And I'm like. I'm going to have to bring like a Clorox bottle with me. Yeah, really? <laughs> that's, that's at least four peepees. You can buy catheters on Amazon. 
Don't ask why I know that, but you can. Done and done. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, All right. So, all right. Have we talked about this enough? I think so. Yeah. I say, you know what? It's fine. There's worse things on earth. Uh, You're a terrible critic, but that's your opinion. (laughs) That's right. Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I probably wouldn't see it in the theater. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so next uh, next episode is our hundredth episode. Woohoo! Uh, and so we had, had a long, thought, thoughtful discussion two minutes before we hit play. <laughs> Do you like this. this idea? Yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, we're going to discuss John Carpenter movies next week. Um, so Jason had an idea that we'll pick our top fives, but we're not allowed to pick the thing because it's clearly all of our favorites. Right. <laughs> right. So your only homework is if you're in the chat room is if you want to watch some John Carpenter movies, go for it. Uh, and uh, we'll yeah. have some fun with that. Oh, and are we, do we want to take some questions or something? Yeah. Like that? So during this week, either you, you, we will answer questions also, not just on John Carpenter about anything. You want to hear about Jack's prostate? We'll talk about it. So <laughs> go to Facebook, our Facebook page, but also on Twitter. How about uh, FG, the hashtag FG 100? How's that sound? Works okay. So put your question on on Twitter, hashtag FG, final guys, 100. Or in the YouTube 100, comments. Zero, or in the YouTube comments. We'll gather, we will cull these questions so we can. We answer. reserve the right to not use any of them. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> Jack is very worried about your questions, so hit them hard. Uh, yeah. We also have some books uh, we'll probably give away. We haven't really figured that out yet, what we want to do, but Sheridan Bradford, who does the drinking rules for us, has some books to give away. Pam Morris has said, I think she'll give uh, her new book away. I, I have to, my memory's terrible, but something like that. I'll give some away, maybe even some paperbacks. I don't know. We'll I'll see. give some paperbacks away myself. So any books, what the hell? We'll just throw everything out there. So stay tuned. We're trying to figure that shit out. Let you know. Awesome. All right. So we'll see you next week uh, for the big one. One zero zero. Yeah. Remember, no matter how much you shake and dance, the last two drops go in your pants. Oh, and please, if if you're listening to this and you enjoy it, we haven't gotten a, a iTunes review since like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> so, you know, just help us out there. Thanks. Yeah, yeah like 50,000 people listen to our Leprechaun episode. Can one of you put a <laughs> review in there? There is a boon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us a review, something. That'd be great. <laughs> I love it. I'm out of. I'm out of words. I'm done. All right. All right. See you next week. Bye. <laughs> mm-hmm.